How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Grip. We are back at Sun and Fun. If you can see, I'm excited. Uh, today, I'm gonna show you an airplane that I was not able to get access to a year ago, but we're back a year later and we're gonna check out Technum's newest line of aircraft, the P-2012. Stay tuned. Twin engines, pistons, and this is what Technum is going for right now. If you look at this aircraft, you can see that it's not your standard single pilot airplane. And naturally, you will look at this thing and think, okay, it's for commercial. And generally speaking, this airplane can serve several missions. And it is one you can use for commercial, part 121, carrying people up and about. Now, <laughs> let me go around it for a bit now you all you look at this then there are probably other similar aircraft in the same category or class or that you've seen before but i think what sets the 2012 or aka the traveler apart is those engines these are piston engines and generally speaking you may have piston engines that are used for charter operations and things like that uh, but nothing this size okay usually you can have a piston that can carry maybe four to six people this airplane will seat up to ten now I say up to ten including the pilot or co-pilot up front there are nine seats in the back and while I'm going around it here I will show you that interior in a little bit but you've got nine seats where people can sit in and then you've got also two seats up front where the pilot and co-pilot can sit in now if i take you up here two seats but guess what this is a single pilot operated aircraft so you don't necessarily need two pilots to fly this bird you can have one pilot even in commercial uh, uh situations or commercial settings i mean you can have just one pilot fly people or load around but before i get in that interior i want to talk a bit about this engine because it's one of the biggest questions i had <laughs> You know, even if I was a non-aviator, but because I do know a little bit about airplanes and engines, I thought to myself, well, who in their right minds will use piston engines to carry all these people? Because naturally you think turbines are better in terms of their the data and also in terms of reliability. But these are not your ordinary piston engines. As a matter of fact, this is one of your legacy engines like Omen, but it is Fadec. I believe this is the old 540 family and this one here has a computer that runs things for you and you can see also it's a four bladed prop and one thing you see you see this pen right here you see the anti-icin on the prop you have the TKS also here and also if you look at the back stabilizers here you also have TKS but back to the engine itself you can see a little bit of the bay area it's dark out here but this engine is semi fadec and I say semi I'll explain that in a little bit so if you're familiar with fadec engine basically you have a computer that runs flows for you in the airplane rather than the pilot doing all that work so your your fuel injection mixture temperature control speed control all that good stuff is controlled with one lever now let me show you what that looks like in the cockpit generally speaking when you have a fadec you would usually have just one lever which is this right here which is your power but you can see in here you have both the power and the prop now in a legacy plane you would have power prop and then you have another lever for mixture but right here with the prop lever that's also combined with your fuel flow so whenever you're flying this airplane say you're taking off you you push your power up and once you've done that you can lean and control basically your engine speed with this and again you don't need an additional lever to for your fuel flow or anything like that the prop and mixture will work in sync because you have computers calculating the numbers for you which i think is pretty awesome and then if you come here 
what we have in this awesome glass panel is a Garmin system. Some of you pilots may already know what this looks like if you're familiar with the Garmin G1000. That's what this looks like but this is a G1000 NXI and you find these in more sophisticated airplanes because usually the NXIs are tailored to the specific aircraft. So for example, you can look in the Cirrus line of models and they have something similar, but that system is also tailored to the Cirrus, just as this NXI system is tailored to the Traveler here. And you have three screens, which is more than enough that you need. And speaking of also, I've explained the FADEC earlier. Now in any airplane you fly, you have to do what's called a run up. And in a legacy plane, you have to move this around, power up, make sure all of that, check your mags. But guess what? In this airplane, you're just using these two buttons here. And once you use those buttons, it basically runs through your flow, your entire flow for you, where you don't have to move any other levers. And I think that's pretty neat. Generally, you find those in jets. So turbine engines will have those, but now it's been transferred over to piston engines, which I think it's pretty cool. Now, let's talk about sitting in comfort. Again, you have two pilot seats up here, and you also have your circuit breakers up here. Now, let me see what these levers are for. See, it says engine usable. That's your fuel selector. Kind of cool. So your fuel selectors are up here. You do have some other switches there. And again, you have electronic switches and your circuit breakers. And I like how they make use of the space where this is not too crazy. And you do have your typing pad here, or your keyboard uh, for your uh, Garmin avionics. Now, rudder pedal standard i always like the flat surface now if you look for example in my airplane normally they come with these where it's just the thin layer but if you've ever flown an airplane that has like a pad where you can rest your foot trust me it, it changes everything i feel comfortable flying uh, with rudder pedals that has that so you do have this now if you look at the seat in, you do have the setup here where you're able to adjust the seat back and forth. I don't imagine that you can do the same with the rudder pedals. And generally speaking, this is the setup in airplanes where you can either adjust your rudder pedals or you can adjust the seat. Again, it is a single pilot airplane, so you don't necessarily need two pilots to fly it. Now, let me show you where, to me, this airplane excels, right? So you come all the way to the back here and this is what this airplane was built for generally so for example you see that the entire door is open but you can have that closed the reason why you have this also is to get access to the baggage compartment and if you look here you have up to 525 pounds just for the baggage area and then you step in the interior now to step in you've got a nice step up here and you can just step in into this I think a wonderful interior. Now, again, this is why you think commercial when you when you look at this uh, airplane. You see, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine seating for nine people. Now, I don't imagine that you are going to get a ton of taller people, but I do imagine that the average size person will be able to sit here and be able to sit comfortable. Now, if I sit. Almost. On another thing I always gauge is the leg room. So for example, the, the seat all the way back here, you do have what I think is an ample amount of leg room. But I imagine if you sit in any of these, I think you should be okay. Except you have taller limbs, then maybe you might have issues. And the, the uh, aisle, for example, it's quite narrow. So again, you don't compare this to your big jumbo jets. But I imagine for short hops, which is what this airplane will probably be operated as or used for, uh, you should have comfortable seating for the passengers. Now, speaking of passenger and comfort, you see those vents. This airplane can be equipped with an air condition. You also have your heating system. And then also, speaking of load earlier, now you can put a bit over 500 pounds back here but if you come up here too to the nose, you've got another 200 pounds or 227 pounds of baggage area. So you can carry people and carry some, 
some pretty uh, substantial amount of baggage with you uh, on this thing. Now, let's talk about the performance because I think whoever is looking into this, uh, they're gonna look at the numbers. I, I've tried to think in my head, like who is this airplane for? I don't imagine that the, the average pilot or solo pilot would be looking at one of these. It's, it's, a, it's more plane than you will ever need. But for a part 135, or a part 121 these are either charter companies uh, who fly uh, their clients privately or for special operations if you're running your operations say in a remote uh, part of the country that's uh, for example you don't have the big airlines go there this is something that could come in handy and the price would tell also and I'll, I'll let you know what this plane costs in a minute but let's talk about the performance numbers so again you've got dual uh, FADEC engines on each side and your fuel capacity in this airplane is 198 pounds sorry 198 gallons not pounds 198 gallons of fuel and with 198 gallons you're able to go anywhere from 600 to 950 nautical miles the average cruise speed in this airplane is 173 knots and you have a max ceiling of 19,500 feet now if you come below another thing i thought was unique to this plane is you see the landing gears they're fixed generally when you have an airplane of this caliber they're usually retractable landing gear but technum said simple is what they want and they thought of all of the missions that this aircraft can be used for and that's why they went with the fixed landing gear so less things to worry about and again you think of different missions people load you can use this for skydiving things like that and so it is a fixed landing gear now the price a brand new fully loaded technum p 2012 will run you about three million dollars so again this is why i don't think this is just an airplane that a single or solo pilot would be looking at this would be more for special missions or commercial operations and for three million you can get your hands on this baby and that is my review of the Technum Traveler. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments because I'm going to forward them to Technum. Thank you all so much for watching. If this is your first time, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Again, my name is Mike. Also give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And if you're looking for any plane, including this one, you can find them listed or you can list your airplane to sell at aeroavion.com. I will catch you guys on the next video.